Okay, Periscope, we are coming to you live from the City of Angels. Well, technically, <laughs> technically we're not in the City of Angels. We're in the City of Gardena, near the City of Angels, right? So welcome your, um, your followers, send them all in. I thank you. I see you joining on Periscope and you on YouTube. Uh, you can go to our website and get the notes uh, to follow along with the lessons that we share. And this will just give you the information here, solfellowship.com. And uh, click on the notes page also. You can do your giving there. And I'm asking that when you watch this on YouTube, that you would like the video, that you would uh, sign up for notification. There's a little bell. Make sure you click the bell uh, as many times as you need to. Hey, Andy, I see you there. Purplicious, thank you. I see different ones of you coming on. Let your friends and loved ones know. Go to the website. This lesson today is going to be, I see you, Bridie. I see you. Uh, yes, Sister Lewis, I see you. This lesson today is going to be amazingly powerful to change your life. We're going to change some things, but here's what I'm going to do first, and I want you to hear this. First, I want to lay a spiritual foundation so you would have faith in the Word of God for the changes to take place. And they are going to take place, all right? So let's pray, and we get right into the Word for the day. Father, I thank you. For what you're doing, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your mercy and your grace. I thank you for how you surround us, you keep us, you bless us. And I thank you, Father, that you have set an expiration date on our misery. And you have set a date for us to come into the promises that you have for us. So thank you that we declare now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Today this scripture, these scriptures we study today, will be fulfilled in your life today. And I want you to get that again. Go to the website, solfellowship.com. Click on the notes. Also there, you can do your giving. The, the notes is on the, um, the notes page, okay? Click on there, and let's get started. Hey, I see you. Thank you. Hadn't seen you in a while. Thank you for showing up there on Periscope. You ready? Now... What is my first point? I first want to go over the Word of God to let it sink in because what I'm going to ask you to do toward the end of this time together is going to take faith to activate it. You're going to be able to do it, but it's going to take faith to activate it. So let's go to the first scripture. Is 2 Kings chapter 7. Could someone put up there on Periscope 2 Kings chapter 7? We're going to walk through that scripture. Uh, first couple of verses, and then we're going to walk through the ending of it, and then I'm going to show you how to put it into play in your life in a powerful way. This is the day of new beginning for you and a day of an evicting spiritual tenants, all right? Yes, thank you. Second Kings chapter 7. So there were, the Bible says, thank you, there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate and they said to one another, why sit we here until we die? Now, pause for a moment. We, we were usually not around people with leprosy. But think of leprosy perhaps uh, with the stigma of somebody with AIDS and with bleeding sores. Okay, So everybody was trying to stay away from them, right? Okay, thank you. 2 Kings 7, verse number 3. So there were four of these leprosy men who were outside of the city. Everyone else was inside having a lot of fun. They were outside starving uh, because the city was under siege. Another uh, nation had come to surround them to take them over, right? And here's what they said. They say, why should we sit here and die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is what? In the city and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we should die also. Now, therefore, let us go to the hosts of the Syrians. Follow what they're saying. Their, their lives are already messed up by a lot of circumstances. They're already upset and pushed away. They said, let us go to the Syrians. If they save us alive, what will happen? Can you all see it here at the table? What will happen? If they save us alive, what will happen? We will what? 
live. Do you see it? If they save us alive, we will live. Do you see that? And if they kill us, what's going to happen? We shall but die. You got it? So they rose up in, at twilight. They went to the camp of the Syrians. And when they came to the uttermost part of the camp of the Syrians, nobody was there. Why? The Lord, I want you to get this because the Lord is going to do the same work in your life. Okay? The Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots, a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said to one another, Lo, the king of Israel has hired uh, against us the king of the Hittites, the king of the Egyptians, to come against us. Wherefore they arose, fled at midnight, left their tents, their horses, their asses, even the camp as it was, and they took off. Now, what happened? I want you to get this. You got to see it. Did the lepers make the man run? No. Did the people there make them run? No. Are you all following? Here at the table, I'm trying to get them to follow along with the scripture, right? Who made them run? Because this, it is for you at the table as well as for you on Periscope. What made the enemy run? The Lord did something, right? The Lord caused them to hear a noise of chariots. There were no chariots. Caused them to hear the noise of horses. There were no horses. The noise of a great host. It wasn't anybody but God moving, right? And if you follow this process, God is going to move on your life. And they said to one another, whoa, all of this kind of stuff happened. And they took off and ran. And they left everything behind. You got it? And now here come the four lepers. They come along and they come into the camp and they find food. They find money. They find everything your heart could desire. I mean, they found so much stuff. They started taking it and hiding it and burying it and all kind of stuff, right? And the Bible says in verse number eight, man, wouldn't that be a great day for you? That if you woke up and it was just gold laying all over the place, man, and everything you wanted, right? They went in one tent. They ate there and they went in another tent. Have you ever, I remember staying in a, um, man, it must have been a five-star resort hotel at the top of the, the place. I wasn't in a penthouse, but it was up near the top. I mean, in one of the best rooms in the hotel. And my room, so rather than, you know, my room had a living room. It had a bedroom. It had a dining room. It had the bathroom. It had all that. That was my hotel room, all of that. And the, the shower and all of this kind of stuff. So it was like my hotel room was like an apartment, right? And I went through there and I used up everything. I dirtied up the living room. Well, not dirtied up, but I cluttered it up there. And then I went over here and cluttered up the other room and went down the hall and cluttered up the other room. And You know, they were doing that here. They were eating in one place, eating in another place, carrying the food all over the place, right? And then here's where you have to go. And this is why I'm talking to you today. Verse number nine. Then they said to one another, we do not well. This is why I'm talking to you today. This day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry into the morning light, some mischief will come unto us. Now therefore come, that we may go and tell the king's household. Let me pause. The reason why I'm saying this, what I'm about to share with you at the end of the message today is something that I have personally learned, personally put into practice, and personally will benefit from in a major way. And as I was setting all this stuff in motion to bless my life, man, it hit me. Should I bring it and talk to people about it? Should I bring it? And the scripture hit me very clearly. Man, if you bl get blessed by this and you don't tell the people how also they can get blessed and what they can do, you are not doing well. You're like the lepers who are enjoying all that God has for you, and you're holding back on sharing the good news with others, okay? Anybody understand what I'm saying? Put up there, you understand. Let me know that you understand it. So what did they do? They went to the city. They told uh, the people in the city what would happen. And, of course, they went out and checked. It was just as they said. By, by the way, by the way, by the way, yes, God, listen, God had prophesied, thank you, God had sent a prophetic word through the man of God 
that these changes would happen and now they were happening. And I'm coming to you today as a man of God to tell you what God has set in motion, that this is the time for the shift to be made. Listen to me. And I cannot hold back what God is releasing in my life. And I want it released in your life as well, because you have some things that you need to have released in your life. And they're going to happen. You're going to follow this passage, right? So listen, look at this story again. What you need to know today, what do you need? There was knowledge given. You remember the, the four lepers, they said, whoa, all of this stuff is over here. Let's go tell people. So there was knowledge, but also there was action required. Can somebody put up action? See, I can know something and not take the action, but I thank you. Listen, there's going to be a manifestation of the miraculous power of God in your life as you take action on what I'm going to share with you in just a moment. Did you put action up on Periscope? Think about it there. You're watching on YouTube. Action, action. Even though you get this at a delayed time, action, we declare, will still take place in your life. Rest. And somebody, you're ready for action. You're ready for God to move. Now, did you notice in the story when the four leprous men, thank you, when the four leprous men got there, the miracle had already happened? But they needed a revelation. They needed to take action and go. So I'm telling you, somebody, the miracle has already happened the night before, right? So you need the knowledge. You need the revelation of where to go and also what to do to gain access to what God has already released. Can I say that again? You need revelation. You need insight on where to go and what to do to receive what God has already provided. God didn't rain down food and gold on them. It had already happened the night before the people took off, left everything behind. It was sitting there all night long, and it's available for you today. So I'm going to share with you what you and I must do now. Somebody say now. This is not something you delay with, not something you fool with, not something you put off. Do you know one of the, the challenging things in life is that many of the miraculous things God has told me to share with people did not come with fireworks and lightning and the wings of angels and all that kind of stuff. And they did not move and they missed out on what God had for them. Don't you miss this? Somebody right there, don't, I'm not going to miss it. You're going to get your blessing. You're going to follow this. So today... I'm going to share you what you need to do. Now, if you want you if you want the totality of this message, I'm not going to be able to give all of it today, but the totality of the message, you can go to Dr. Erica Shepherd's Ted Line TV. And for day 27, she says, "Unstop the your dam." You know how the devil would dam up stuff that's flowing in your life? Dr. Erica Shepherd, day 27, "Unstop your dam." Are you ready? So here we go. Let me share the scripture. I'm almost done. I know. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm almost done. I'm going to go to point number four. Did you go to the website? Point number four. I'm going to tell you what to do in just a moment. Point number four. It says here, and the Lord said, can we read this together? And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of who? My people, which are in Egypt, and have heard heard their cry by reason of the taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. God knows what you're going through. Somebody listening, you're going through pain, you're going to misery, you're going to financial issues, relationship issues, health issues, mental. God knows what you're going through. And what does this say in the next verse? It says, and I am what? I am come down. Do you see that? I am, I've surely seen, I am come down to do what? Deliver them out of. I need you to underline that passage. Did you get it? God is saying, I am come down to do what? Deliver you out of. You get the whole message with Dr. Erica Shepherd, Ted Line Ministries, Day 27. Listen to that video on YouTube as well. You get the whole thing. I'm giving you a portion of what I am activating in my life right now. 
I am come down to deliver you out of. Do you see that? I'm coming down to deliver you out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring you out of that land into a what? Good land, a large, into a land flowing with milk and honey, into the land of the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Amorites, the Perizzites. She goes on, and therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me. I've seen the oppression. So God is saying, I know what's going on, right? I've seen what's going on. So I'm coming down to deliver you out of what's going on. And there's going to be a fight because we're going to have to fight the Canaanites. Man, but if you do your part, listen, some of you, the Canaanites, are the physical challenges you're facing. Some of you, the Canaanites, are the financial challenges you're facing. Some of you, the Canaanites, are the internal discord that's going on that's holding you back. And God is saying, I, I see it. I'm ending your affliction now. I'm coming down now in order to bring you out of the stuff that you're in. You got it? There's going to be some war. You're going to come up and out of the affliction, and God's going to bring you to a land floor with milk and honey. The next scripture, are you there? The next scripture, Exodus chapter 13. If you don't have the notes, you should have the notes. You can go to the website right now and pick up the notes. But let me give you the scripture. Exodus chapter 13, verses 3 to, through 5. The devil is a liar, amen? You're going to receive your blessing. You're not going to let anything pass you up. Exodus 13, 3 to 5. And Moses said to the people, remember this day in which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of the hand of the Lord brought you out from this place. That's God saying, I'm going to bring you out of that illness. That's God saying, I'm going to bring you out of that mental torture. That's God saying, I'm going to bring you out of that financial bondage. That's God saying, I'm going to bring you out of that wishy-washy situation where you can't stand on the word of God. See, I'm, I'm giving you the word. Let it build you up because your next move is going to be established on the word of God. He swear to give you. Look at the next scripture, Leviticus chapter 20, Leviticus 20, 24. You have it? Leviticus 20. Thank you. Leviticus 20, 24. But I have said unto you, you shall, ye shall inherit their land, and I would give it to you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. You get this? Listen, when other people get sick, the only thing they have helping them is what their body can do and what a physician can do. But listen, you are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. And when you are faced with problems, when you are faced with demonic attacks and all that, you have not only what you can do and what doctors can do and all of that, you have God, you have the Holy Spirit, the, the Spirit of God on, on the inside of you, there to help you and there to help you overcome. And God comes along to separate you from that bondage that's been holding you down. Are you getting that? Deuteronomy 26. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let this sink right into your spirit, man. Deuteronomy 26, 8 and 9. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Who did it? God brought us up out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm, with great terribleness, and with signs and with wonders. And he has brought us into this place. And has given us this land. And what is the land? What flowing with milk and honey. Okay, now here, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to tell you what to do. I've shared the word of God with you. And what did the word of God clearly say? God has come down to bring you out of the thing that's oppressing you. So you got demonic oppression going on. And it's generally connected with illness and madness and all of that. You have physical oppression going on. You have your own mindset, you know, trapping you. Ungodly thoughts, ungodly people around you. God said, I'm coming down to pull you out of that, right? God says, I'm separating you from people. I'm separating you from those things. Anybody today want to be separated from the illness, the failure, the mistakes, the madness, right? Bankruptcy. You want to be separated from that and move forward in the things of God. God is saying, I'm doing that. And, and I'm doing it with my mighty hand. Now, faith comes by hearing the word of God. Let me ask you, does God know your situation? Oh, yes, he does. 
Does God have a plan to deal with your situation? Oh, yes, he does. Is God's plan better than your, your plan? So what is your part? Remember, there's action. There's war. Are you willing to fight back? Are you willing to do as instructed? Are you willing to take the steps? Spiritual warfare, take action. So here's the first thing I want you to do. This, Listen, this is not a message that you just listen to and walk away from. I know some of you are saying, okay, this is use your okie doke. I listen to this and do no, no. This is this is a this is a a divine signal that it's time for you to flip the switch and move with this. What do I want you to do? I want you to begin now making a list of everything the devil has stolen from you. You got it? Make a list of everything the devil has stolen from you, and I want you to put it in letter form. Are you listening to me? I want you to put it in letter form because you're going to write down an eviction notice for all the satanic misery in your life, how the devil has messed with your children, how he's messed with your mind, how he's messed with your health. He's messed with your finances, your in-laws, your outlaws, your dog, your cat, your horses, your chickens, and even the people on your job. Everything the devil has stolen from you. Some of the years that have been eaten up, the devil has just stolen. You out there partying, having a good time, and wasting your life, pouring your life down the drain. Men and women have come into your life and just sucked the blood out of you, right? The devil using them to drain you, to pull you down. Make a list. Are you hearing me? Make a list. Not a sermon you just listen to. Make a list of everything that the devil has stolen from you. I want you to put it in letter form. I want you to date it. Listen. I want you to put it in letter form. I want you to put the scriptures that we use at the top of the letter and the scriptures that we use at the bottom of the letter. And I want you to declare to Satan you are being evicted. You are writing an eviction letter to the devil for everything he's done, right? You're sending that letter. You're going to mail it to yourself. Send it through the post system priority mail. That's what you're going to do. And when you receive that, that the promises that God has outlined for you are going to be activated in your life just like that. Because what's going to happen? God is coming down in order to bring you out of What's been holding you back? If you got that, could you put right in on Periscope that you got it? Those of you watching on YouTube, I can't literally see your, see your response right there, but you can get in touch with me uh, through SOL Fellowship. Let me know that you were watching today. What am I asking you to do? Yes, you got it. You got it. So listen, yes, I see you. You're going to write. You're going to write your letter. What has the devil stolen from you? Over the years, what is, and listen, and, and he's stealing stuff from you now. Write it down. He's being evicted now in the name of Jesus. You're going to write that out and get that letter ready to put in the mail. You're going to put the scriptures at the top because God is coming to bring you out. God is your deliverer coming to get you. And then, listen, I didn't get into it today. I'm getting into it on our next gathering. you got to be here at our next gathering. Put, your, put a notice somewhere so you know when I'm online. you got to get it. I'm going to show you how this is going to flow out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. God is going to use you and your activities and your faith in his word to make a difference. And I'm declaring today that those of you who hear it, and those of you who follow, who take the actions, not just getting it in here, but you take the actions, you fight the good fight of faith. And what is the good fight of faith? You're going to write the letter. You're going to write an addiction note. Somebody ought to be mad with the devil. All the stuff that he's taken from you. Take it back. Take it back. And God will even give you scriptures where you're supposed to get it back with interest. Did you get it? Let me know you got it. Let me know you got it. I'm going to pray now. I'm going to trust that I've shared the word with you. And there's more to share. I'm going to take my time and walk you through it. But your part, your part is to believe the word of God. My part is to teach it. Your part is to learn it. I can't learn it from you, but I can certainly teach it. Right? 
I'm sharing with you the word of God. Yes, you got it. You got it. You're going to put it into practice. In your assignment, write out a list of everything the devil has stolen from you. You're taking it back. You are taking it back. And then we're going to war for what's rightfully yours. Father God, I thank you today. In the wonderful name of Jesus, you allowed me this privilege and this honor to speak to the people here at the table, the people on YouTube, as well as on Periscope, as well as on Facebook. Somebody will share this on Facebook. You share it with your friends. I thank you for your word that makes a difference in all of our lives. I thank you for the strength to take action. And Father, I thank you that the Holy Spirit of God is moving right now upon your people. And you are planting in their life that determination, that urge to fight to where the weak is saying today, I am strong. I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Right? You're putting on the whole arm of God and you're going to stand, my brother. You're going to stand, my sister. I'm also declaring to you that you're going to see the manifestation of the power of God in your life. As you and God stand and evict the devil, we believe in him for that. He's going to change your heart in the process. It's a painful thing for God to change your heart, but he's going to change your heart in the process. You're going to love the Lord with all your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your might, with all of your strength. So, Father, I thank you for what you released today. I thank you for what you've caused to happen in the lives of your people. We just love what you're doing with them, and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, and thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.